What is Inflectra? Inflectra is a mouse-derived human chimeric monoclonal antibody that binds with high affinity to both the soluble and transmembrane forms of TNF-alpha but not to lymphotoxin alpha. It inhibits the functional activity of TNF-alpha. How to use Inflectra? Intravenous infusion over a period of not less than 2 hours. Inflectra is for adults over 18 years of age. What is Inflectra infusion for? Rheumatoid arthritis, 3 mg slash kg followed by additional 3 mg slash kg infusion doses at 2 and 6 weeks after the first and then once every 8 weeks. It should be administered concomitantly with methotrexate. If there is an adequate response or loss of response after this period, increase the dose at intervals of approximately 1.5 mg slash kg up to a maximum dose of 7.5 mg slash kg every 8 weeks. Alternatively, administration of 3 mg slash kg every 4 weeks may be considered. If signs and symptoms of disease recur, infliximab can be re-administered within 16 weeks after the last infusion. 2. Active Crohn's disease, moderate to severe, 5 mg slash kg followed by an additional infusion of 5 mg slash kg two weeks after the first infusion. If no response after two doses, do not administer additional treatment. If response. Maintenance, 5 mg slash kg six weeks after the initial dose, followed by infusion every eight weeks, or. Readministration, 5 mg slash kg of symptoms and signs of disease reappear within 16 weeks after last infusion. 3. Active fistulizing Crohn's disease, 5 mg slash kg repeated at 2 and 6 weeks after the first infusion. If no response after 3 doses, do not administer treatment. If response. Maintenance, additional 5 mg slash kg infusions every 8 weeks, or. Readministration, Infusion of 5 mg slash kg if signs and symptoms of disease recur, followed by 5 mg slash kg every 8 weeks. If signs and symptoms of disease recur, infliximab can be re-administered within 16 weeks after the last infusion. 4. Ankylosing spondylitis, 5 mg slash kg repeated at 2 and 6 weeks following the first infusion and then every 6 to 8 weeks thereafter. If there is no response after two doses, do not administer additional treatment with infliximab. 5. Psoriatic arthritis, 5 mg slash kg, repeat at 2 and 6 weeks and then every 8 weeks. 6. Active ulcerative colitis, 5 mg slash kg, repeated at 2 and 6 weeks, then every 8 weeks. 7. Psoriasis, 5 mg slash kg, repeated at 2 and 6 weeks, then every 8 weeks. If there is no response after 4 doses, do not continue treatment. When maintenance treatment is interrupted, and there is a need for readministration, the use of a new induction dosing regimen is not recommended. In this situation, it should be started again as a single dose followed by the recommendations for maintenance doses described above. Mode of administration of Inflectra Intravenous infusion over a 2-hour period. All patients administered infliximab should be kept under observation for at least 1-2 to two hours after the infusion to rule out acute infusion-related reactions. An emergency kit, including adrenaline, antihistamines, corticosteroids and artificial ventilation, should be available. Solution for injection in pre-filled syringe or pre-filled pen is administered by subcutaneous injection only. Contraindications of Inflectra Hypersensitivity to infliximab and other murine proteins, tuberculosis or other serious infections such as septicemia, abscesses and opportunistic infections, moderate to severe heart failure, class 3-4 according to NEHA classification. Warnings and precautions with Inflectra Traceability, record name and lot number. Risk of systemic reactions to injection, anaphylactic shock and delayed hypersensitivity reactions. Acute reactions, including anaphylactic reactions, may occur during infusion. May be treated with antihistamine, 
hydrocortisone and or paracetamol to prevent mild and transient effects. SC administration, localized reactions at the injection site, which resolved spontaneously without treatment. Monitor for the development of infections including tuberculosis, before, during and after treatment for up to six months. If a new infection develops while on infliximab treatment, monitor closely and undergo a full diagnostic evaluation. If severe new infection or sepsis, discontinue infliximab and initiate appropriate antimicrobial or antifungal therapy until infection is controlled. Caution with chronic infection or history of recurrent infections, including concomitant immunosuppressive therapy. Concomitant with TNF antagonists are more susceptible to severe infections, as TNF suppression may mask symptoms of infection such as fever. Tuberculosis, evaluate for both active and inactive. Latent? Tuberculosis before initiating treatment. If active tuberculosis is diagnosed, do not initiate treatment with infliximab. If latent tuberculosis is diagnosed, initiate anti-tuberculosis prophylaxis. Consider treatment for tuberculosis before initiating treatment with infliximab in patients who have several or significant risk factors for tuberculosis and have a negative test for latent tuberculosis, or with a history of latent or active tuberculosis in whom an adequate course of treatment cannot be confirmed. Risk of invasive fungal infections such as aspergillosis, candidiasis, pneumocystosis, histoplasmosis, coccidioidomycosis or blastomycosis upon onset of severe systemic disease. Do not initiate treatment in fistularizing Crohn's disease with acute suppurative fistulas. HBV reactivation, test for HBV infection before starting treatment, plus consult with a specialist in hepatitis B treatment. Patients requiring treatment with infliximab should be closely monitored for signs and symptoms of active HBV infection during treatment and for several months after the end of treatment. If HBV reactivation occurs, discontinue infliximab and initiate effective antiviral therapy with appropriate supportive care. If jaundice and or alt elevations greater than or equal to 5 times the upper limit of normal develop, discontinue treatment with infliximab. Concomitant administration with anakinra, with abatacept, or with other biologic drugs is not recommended due to the possibility of increased risk of infection and other potential drug-drug interactions. Monitor when switching from one biologic drug to another. It is recommended that the current vaccination schedule be completed. Not concomitant with live microorganism vaccines. If symptoms indicative of lupus-like syndrome develop after treatment with infliximab and is positive for antibodies to double helix DNA, no further treatment should be given. In patients with pre-existing or new-onset demyelinating disorders, consider the benefits and risks of treatment with an anti-TNF prior to initiation of treatment with infliximab. If these disorders develop discontinuation of treatment, Risk of development of lymphomas or other neoplasms and hepatosplenic T-cell lymphoma, more with Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis in patients treated with a TNF antagonist. Caution when considering treatment with TNF antagonists in patients with a history of malignancy or when considering continued treatment in patients who develop malignancy. Caution should also be exercised in patients with psoriasis and anamnesis of extensive immunosuppressive therapy or prolonged PUVA treatment. Mild heart failure, monitor closely and should not continue treatment with infliximab in patients who develop new symptoms or worsening heart failure. Risk of pancytopenia, leukopenia, neutropenia and thrombocytopenia. Consider discontinuation of infliximab treatment if significant hematological changes are confirmed. In case of surgery, the long half-life of infliximab must be taken into account. It should be closely monitored for infections, and appropriate measures should be taken. Lack of response to treatment for Crohn's disease may indicate the presence of an established fibrotic stricture that may require surgical treatment. There is no evidence that infliximab worsens or causes fibrotic strictures. Interactions with infliximab 
Combination of ion flectro with, with other biologic therapies used to treat the same conditions including anakinra and abatacept or with live vaccines or concurrently with therapeutic infectious agents is not recommended, increased risk of serious infections and neutropenia. Pregnancy and in flectra, the available clinical experience is too limited to exclude a risk, and therefore, administration of infliximab during pregnancy is not recommended. Due to its inhibition of TNF-alpha, administration of infliximab during pregnancy could affect the normal immune response in the newborn. In a mouse embryo developmental toxicity study using an analogous antibody that selectively inhibits the functional activity of mouse TNF-alpha, there was no indication of maternal toxicity, embryotoxicity, or teratogenicity. Infliximab crosses the placenta and has been detected for up to six months in the serum of infants born to women treated during pregnancy. Therefore, these infants may be at increased risk of infection. Administration of live vaccines to infants exposed to infliximab in utero for six months after the last infusion of infliximab to the mother during pregnancy is not recommended. Lactation and Inflectra it is unknown whether infliximab is excreted in human milk or systemically absorbed after ingestion. Because human immunoglobulins are excreted in milk, women should not breastfeed for at least six months after treatment with infliximab. Adverse Reactions of Inflectra Viral Infection, Influenza, Herpes Virus Infection, Bacterial Infections, Septicemia, Cellulitis, Abscesses, Neutropenia leukopenia, anemia, lymphadenopathy, respiratory allergic symptom, depression, insomnia, headache, vertigo, dizziness, hypoesthesia, paresthesia, conjunctivitis, tachycardia, palpitations, hypotension, hypertension, ecchymosis, flushing, facial flushing, upper respiratory tract infection, sinusitis, lower respiratory tract infection, bronchitis, pneumonia, dyspnea, epistaxis, abdominal pain, nausea, gastrointestinal bleeding, diarrhea, dyspepsia, gastroesophageal reflux, constipation, abnormal liver function, elevated transaminases, new onset or worsening of psoriasis, including postular psoriasis, urticaria, rash, pruritus, hyperhidrosis, dry skin, fungal dermatitis, eczema, alopecia, arthralgias, myalgia, back pain, urinary tract infection, perfusion-related reaction, pain, chest pain, fatigue, fever, injection site reaction, chills, edema. Other adverse reactions identified after evaluation of pharmacovigilance data, Kaposi sarcoma.